Доброго ранку усім, хто є у залі. Good morning everyone who watch us online. We start our working day at Ukraine Crisis Media Center. The first topic is Invisible Battalion, the first full-length film about the Ukrainian women's participation in the war with Russia. Several months ago, representatives of the project attended our um, meeting and they said why it is important and needed. Now the work is nearly completed and I give the floor to our guests. Good afternoon, I am Irina Suslava, People's Deputy of Ukraine, co-author of the um, uh, and I am the would like to thank Maria Berlinska and all those who participated in the shooting of the first full fl length film about the Ukrainian women's participation in the war with Russia. So today it is important uh, uh, to highlight the role of women and the women. They are in the ATO zone at the front line as volunteers or as um, servicemen. Also, it is important to say that uh, numerous research say about positive experience of Israel and NATO countries, and this is convincing evidence and uh, that uh, women can serve in the armed forces of Ukraine as well. And the Ukrainian army is obliged to respond to changes of the role of wi women in society in order to become more than civilized. And the third uh, that is worth mentioning is that women have the right uh, uh, to serve um, in army because uh, this corresponds international norms and principles of democracy and fairness. And also it is important to create equal conditions for military service in order uh, to get the same positions uh, as men. And uh, in order to do this, there should be proper legislation and uh, um, also there should be um, lim uh, no limitations for women and uh, in order that they could realize their rights in the military. Also, there should be legal responsibility um, in the cases of uh, inequality and discrimination, and we should fight discrimination in defense sector. And uh, the Constitution of Ukraine and the law on equal opportunities for men and women guarantee equal access to all positions, both for men and women in any profession. And uh, uh, by separate order, there are limitations to this access and even education and military lyceums. And in order to provide equal access and equal opportunities for men and women in the military, we should correct uh, several documents. The Order for, uh, of, um, 403 and the Order on Typical Rules for the Development of uh, Regulations for Educational Institutions and the Military Detachments and Military Lyceums. You know that we face now the problem that starting seven years, girls do not have the right to uh, study at a military lyceum if she wants and her parents want. And uh, this is not envisaged by legislation as forbidden. And the order of military uh, ministry of defense and education about the rules of access to the lyceums, uh, military lyceums, uh, and uh, the order of the provision of uh, cabinet uh, min of ministers provision uh, 1087. So these documents uh, create conditions when women cannot serve in the military because they cannot get proper education, not at the level of uh, um, middle education, not at the level of the high education. So now we work with the ministry in order to correct these orders and to introduce proper changes. And after conditions are created in military institutions, we will introduce proper 
practice both for um, girls and boys in order that girls could study at the military lyceums and higher military educational institutions. Together with uh, Ms. Berlinska, we developed uh, draft law uh, 6109 to reduce discrimination in the armed forces of Ukraine. And I would like to go into more detail about this draft law and say what norms are in place now and what we are going to have after the adoption of this draft law. As of today, the age for contract conclusion for men is 45, 60 years, and for women, this is 40 years. And the reserve. Uh, first category for men if they got military speciality. For women, the reserve of second category, uh, despite of getting military speciality, this is done. So also the classes and the limits of age for reserve. Here, this is the most important. The men can serve up to 60, 65 years at the same time. For women, the limit is 50 years. And we know about the consequences of this. And also, the, um, uh, those people, uh, uh, they can um, attend uh, uh, trainings, and uh, uh, so there are some limitations about the uh, uh, service on military duty. So these norms of law, they envisage that uh, the age for contracts for senior officers it differs for men and women 20 years difference, and it reflects on the pension of women. And also uh, the second class of reserve uh, for women is 50 years, and uh, this is from the soldier up to general. and. Uh, in the conclusion of contract, there are, uh, we do not have many women officers and we do not have uh, uh, women generals at all because they cannot uh, serve up to this uh, position. So we should establish equal opportunities for contract conclusion for men and women to cancel the limit for reserve for women and to establish the principle according to which women may serve uh, equally with the men. This is access to positions and, and the equal level of responsibility while being on duty. And the fourth, to establish the same rules for training of men and women. And uh, only those m w women who are on leave uh, due to a pregnancy or birth, they can uh, they will be able not to attend this training. And this draft law was supported by the Committee of uh, Security and Defense, also was unanimously supported by our Committee on the Defense of uh, Minorities and Ethnic Relations. And I believe that the adoption of this document will open road to success uh, for thousands of women who want to serve in the military who are now at the front line. But at the same time, we cannot provide them with the guarantees, uh, social guarantees, because this was not envisaged. And we hope that people, both uh, 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 that men and women can uh, uh, do the same job, and uh, women can meet the criteria that uh, men uh, meet, and they can also contribute to the defense of our country. Now the floor is given to Maria Berlinska. She is the author and director of the Invisible Battalion, head of the NGO Institute for Gender Programs, and head of the Ukrainian uh, Center for Aerial Reconnaissance. Good afternoon. Sorry for delay. I will be brief. This project, Invisible Battalion, we placed information about the project uh, on the site on Facebook. And this was first so sociological research and the first documentary. These are s six stories, and one of the heroes is present today here, and we will be able to hear her speech, Aksana Kuba Kubava. And uh, the whole project and film is aimed at promoting uh, the, our women to make them visible, 
and also that the sector of defense should be based on professionalism, especially in times of war, like it is in the best armies of the world. So there are no limitations there. And women can do the same job as men do. There are transparency contests, who is the best at shooting, who is the best uh, um, in implementing the tasks, or who is best reconnaissance officer. So the, this person will take the position. And the third aspect that is important for us is to show by this film that the war is ongoing, that this is not civil war, this is not civil conflict, this is Russian aggression, and our women are in this war, and they also die, they lose their health, they lose their lives, and uh, we should remind through our women that we should we need not concerns, we need proper steps. We uh, cannot withstand Russian aggression without the support of the civilized world. So this is the main aims of the project. So now I will present three new teasers. And after this, in the um, in the start of uh, 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 at the start of October, we will have this film. This film was uh, um, was completed and at post production stages. And uh, in the nearest future, uh, in uh, one of the leading channels, you will be able to watch this film. And also, I would like to say that this is. This was d done uh, really uh, by several groups with quality equipment. And this was a powerful process with the support of the donor. Inter News Network is the donor. They have U Media program that is supported by USAID. And this became possible due to the support of the United States and due to support of USAID. And uh, uh, now we are going to watch teaser number one. This is about our heroine. Uh, she is Dasha, paramedic. And uh, please launch this teaser. So this is scotch. We will need it. So this is about subculture of people who wore um, some uniform and they wore guitars. And so. I was a creative person, I liked music, guitar, and after all these events, I'm not so airy and uh, I'm not so artistic now. Why we closed our eyes now? Ca she counts. So tourniquet on the right leg. Let's go, 29, 28, 27. So this is the first teaser. Please, next teaser. And the last teaser, the sixth story. The story will uh, end the film. So this is a uh, story of uh, Mrs. Sack.
so please put it on pause. So these are three stories, three teasers and film. As I said, these are six stories, three film directors each made two stories. So these are nine views of women on war. And I thought I counted and revealed that in the project there were 16 or 17 women involved. Uh, designers, color correction, accountants, um, executive producer also was wom woman. And I believe that uh, this is an interesting detail of the project because this is unprecedented project, maybe not in the world, but in Ukraine, what this big project is made by women. And we have a stereotype that women cannot do something really good if they are not headed by men. Um, but I had this project and this project it is going on and uh, this is a good ground and uh, the cancellation of the stereotype. And we believe that women can do really great things together. And now I would like to give the floor to two speakers. This is Oksana Yakubova and Oksana Gavriluk. Oksana Yakubova. She is one of our heroines. I selected the heroine and I chose her. And this was a really good choice. This is a powerful story of a person who really saw the war and the hell of war and all those losses. And this is a story of the person who now have to adapt from zero, from particular help from the side of the state. She starts living from zero and uh, live differently. And this is a big problem that is also raised through her story in the film, that people who go back, they do not have proper support. So they were alone there and here they are also lay left alone. And um, our group was the first people with whom Oksana started to communicate after she returned. And now um, Oksana will tell us about the film, about the process, and then we will speak with Oksana Gavriluk. And she is really a great person from the Ministry of Defense. Good afternoon. So this film was started when I was in hospital. I went to war during the first days and I returned this year only. Three years of war, they really impacted and I went on vacation and I experienced the start of the uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, I stopped uh, talking to people and the uh, doctors really couldn't help me. And the first people I started to speak with, these were the representatives of uh, the group. And um, I do not remember, I cannot say what is in the film, because uh, they shot uh, those aspects when I worked with the psychologists, psychiatrists. It was really difficult for me. And those aspects, when I speak, I do not remember this time. This is true. It was easy for me to communicate with these people. These are the first people who really listened. At home, they are afraid of speaking with you, not only relatives, uh, uh, but really close uh, relatives such as mother or sister, they just try to speak about other things. And uh, at that time, I just wanted to be heard. And uh, psychologists and the group, these were the first people who started to listen to me. They heard about terrible things. They heard me crying. And due to this film, due to this group, I quickly went out of the crisis that I faced. And what I want to say, the rehabilitation of the servicemen should start not from the moment when they go out of war, when they are in civil life. It should start 
when the servicemen went to the military. And what we face today, so women are stronger. They really try to withstand post-traumatic stress disorder. And for men, this happens quickly than in women. And a year for them, this is really a limit. What we see in the military, the leave for those servicemen who serve one year in 80 oh, they have only a small 30 day leave. So they are, uh, they do not see their family, they do not see their children. What is this? 30 days of leave a year. They can go for 10 days uh, to their families, and also there is leave for family, so these are 10 days, and if the command is good, there will be a leave of 10 days, and uh, you go home and just you fall asleep. You do not want to speak, you just want to sleep. So you just have these 10 days and as one day. So also participants of military actions have two weeks that is envisaged by law on veterans. And in this leave is not provided to people who say in ATO zone to no one. So there was an order of the minister to forbid this leave. And it happens that civilians, they have the rest, for example, 60 days, and those guys who are there, they are in more difficult situation and they have less leave. So this leave should be increased up to 15 days per quarter of the year to provide them with opportunity uh, to, uh, they should have uh, um, they should be able to go to with their family somewhere they uh, because it is really difficult to get accustomed to your own family again so here you have your legal family and there you have a factual family and uh, you really should get accustomed to your family and you it is impossible in a short period of time to undergo real um, rehabilitation and the second if servicemen who um, released from the military uh, discharged from the military those who served three years there should be a contract not for uh, half a year or three years but a one year contract should be established and people will have time to uh, have a rest. Uh, three years is too long, half a year is too small. When a person go home from the army, what we see, so you go, you uh, and you are not needed anymore by anyone. And uh, you know that m men, they undergo some training after they, they served and women just are left out. So there should be a group who will meet these people. There should be a crisis psychologist who will see the person who has some post-traumatic stress disorder. They should see it at once and to send those people for rehabilitation. And the doctors should also develop programs for the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. Several days ago in the media, there was information that in Kharkiv, a NATO serviceman blew up and uh, also s and uh, one of the girls said that her man, he got discharged one and a half years ago and he also made the suicide and this girl said everything was normal as he was uh, in a good mood nothing 
bad was there, but you understand that people who went from there, they do not want to complain. No one knows what is in their heads, and no one will say what we think about. And uh, I know that I want to go back. And uh, you see that you do not, uh, the, the, you are not needed here, but you did something important there, and you want to get there. But you, you've never, you are not never able to say this at home. And so a year and a, and a half, and people they start to destroy themselves. So if they do not die there, they die here. So rehabilitation of the servicemen who got post-traumatic stress disorder. It should last for two or three years, and psychologists should monitor them. And in the United States, there is a program for three years. They are under supervision, inactive supervision, and after this, um, this is right, this is correct. So this person won't harm society, but this person can harm himself or herself so this can be the case so it doesn't happen at once it happens uh, a little bit later those people who were in war they served under contract they got discharged and they return and um, many people uh, returned they say we want to return and they returned what i saw when i work with them first they didn't find employment, they were not accepted by their family, and they couldn't also accept their family. And uh, some families, they just uh, uh, got divorced. People were not able to find their place here in civilian life. Then they become the military, and they do not see any obstacles. These are people who become heroes. These pe people, they do not have... Uh, they do not protect themselves. They just can go without helmet, without weapon. They just want to be a hero because he is there to die. So they just search. So they just see them as servicemen, as warriors, and this is serious. So when we accept them to the army, second time we should look the, at these people closely in the commissariats because now tests do not reveal this people they just search for adrenaline in order to revive themselves but this is a real problem and uh, before the start of the project invisible battalion i did not understand this. And after the film was shot, now I speak with the guys that uh, got discharged. I see that this is a big problem. And in three and four years, this will be an acute problem when those who served for three years uh, got released. So we do not know for how long this war will continue. So this is what I wanted to say. Thank you, Oksana. And also, when I looked, uh, when I watched the teaser about Oksana, and we have the full version of the film, we have a separate film about Oksana Petrivna. speak with the world this is a powerful story after which you go out and you just want to uh, just be alone and to think about it now i give the floor and you will see this i will give the floor to oksana gavriluk what i can say about oksana you know my uh, attitude to the, towards the officials from the Ministry of Defense. I believe that many people, they are not non-professional, and I speak about it openly, about Oksana. Uh, this is a pleasant exception. Unfortunately, it happened so that the system created such conditions, 
and Oksana do not, does not work here uh, there anymore. And it confirms that the majority of those guys are really not good. But Oksana is really great. She is an efficient manager. She is really a conscious person. And when she got information about the project, she started to cooperate with us. And now she will tell us about her impression about this topic, about this project. Now she will share her opinion with us about it. Thank you for this assessment, Maria. No, I'm not serving in the military for a month. But for me, uh, Ukrainian armed forces, they are really close to me, and I will try to help them to resolve the problem that they face. So I am from the small percentage of women who reached high positions in the military and in the ministry. I am colonel of reserve, and I uh, was heading the communication department at the ministry, and also I was the deputy head of ATO operation command. And uh, we should integrate our processes and introduce changes to legislation in order to help people like Oksana, because they know the problems from inside. They went along the slow way, and they know everything about the role of women in the military and uh, also social adaptation that should be at the state level, and that should be provided not only in the military. So what changed the Ukrainian army completely? And it will never be like it was in 2014. And um, about the serving of women in the army, we exceeded the percentage of women uh, serving in the army in Europe and in the world. And now more than 10 percent uh, we of women serve in the army. This is a rather high percentage. And as Oksana said, first of all, we should speak about quality and uh, the level of possibilities and uh, professional qualities and opportunities. And uh, we should not, not get any priority, but we should be equal with men and we should be able to uh, take those positions that we really can uh, take. So also there is an issue how the women are selected. And, uh, and due to my experience, I see that uh, there is and uh, there were some Ви знаєте, що за час від початку війни і завдячуючи невидимому батальйону, вже двічі вносили зміни до наказу міністра оборони щодо переліку посад, які можуть заміщатись військовослужбовцями жінками. Він значно розширений, ніж був на початку війни, але це то ще не кінець. And uh... Also, I heard a lot about draft laws and uh, legal acts uh, and the introduction of changes to these acts. And I believe that we should get united to resolve this issue. And the norm that should be changed is about the recruitment to the army of those uh, who uh, do not exceed the age of 45. I'm 37, and I now only got those experience that I can really share to change something in Ukraine. So 40 years is too little. And uh, in 2014, we have uh, six waves of mobilization. So if we recruit those who are uh, under 40, this is too little. So I believe that this uh, we have a lot of women that could really contribute. That's why this norm about age should be changed, about rehabilitation. I would like to add several words on this, I believe. An important step would be the adoption of law concerning the service of men and women in the army that uh, became disabled in the course of ATO. They are 
morally ready to do this, uh, but the law forbids them to continue the service. And in the Supreme Council and legal uh, hundred, they deal with this draft law, and we should work on this further. Also, draft law about. Uh, um, men and women uh, access to military institutions um, after uh, 25. We have those people who have experience that they can share with the teachers of higher educational institutions, and they are more than 23. And uh, they uh, now study there due to the separate order of the minister. But we should uh, incorporate this in the draft law and uh, also several words. Uh, so this project, uh, Invisible Battalion, we have a problem with information policy and implementation of the policy, especially in the military and Ministry of Defense. Unfortunately, we started to speak and bring information to society and to uh, the world community about what is going on in Ukraine. And this project about real women who left behind everything and went to the front line, and it is difficult for them to return home, and they lose uh, their loved ones and uh, every. Grateful to your project for this uh, wonderful work. Thank you. One remark. So on Facebook we have a battle. We, I have a friend on Facebook. He is a renowned lawyer, and he had a lawyers union, and he works uh, 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 on uh, defense of human rights, and he put an announcement that he searches uh, for assistant, a man of uh, 23 years of age, and uh, uh, she sh uh, he should be good looking and uh, uh, attractive. And uh, we inv and uh, we asked what it means this attractiveness. Uh, as though there is ageism, sexism, and discrimination, and everything was done by the lawyer who knows two laws about equal opportunities of men and women and about non-discrimination. So how can this person make such a mistake? And they put it in comments that he is, uh, you are not right. Uh, and. Uh, Every, everyone say that he is a man, he is a colonel, he is responsible, he is important, he can do something. And women, we, they cannot because they have children, they have some background, and they cannot go to the army and defend the state to, ha uh, to take high positions in the executive bodies of power. They cannot be represented at the national level because uh, they have responsibilities. Uh, they should uh, carry out household duties and um, uh, also bring up children. And I believe that this uh, invisible battalion project should open eyes of society. We shouldn't be guided by stereotypes. And uh, we should look around us, and we should see that we have uh, Women who serve in the military, and we have good specialists among women in different spheres of life. And this film, I believe, this will uh, open the eyes, and that should be properly highlighted by the media. And this will open to common people, uh, it will open their eyes, and uh, you should provide assessment of person not based on gender, but on what this person can really do about the lawyer, the colonel, who writes something on Facebook. Using this opportunity, we uh, ask him not to act like a bad person. And you should understand that your behavior is not attractive. You shouldn't be an, uh, uh, you shouldn't behave like this. And about uh, final remarks, I should say, and it is important to know, we uh, ask for uh, javelins from the um, American 
uh, side, but we also need uh, information support. And American people helped us through USAID um, and internews. And uh, lastly, we would like to thank all those who came here. We uh, thank uh, Irina Suslova, Oksana Yakubova, who was a former serviceman, and now she is, works as the chief economist at the Ministry of Finance. And Oksana Gavriluk, who had uh, the, the Department of Communication at the Ministry of Defense. And now she helps civil society and she heads the Information Coordination Center. And from me, I would like to say that soon you will see this film. This film mostly about A, that in society of the future that we build and for what we fight for and lose our best people. Uh, there shouldn't be a place for stupid stereotypes, corruption, discrimination, and uh, abuse of power. There should be a professional selection and uh, forming of the defense sector based on professionalism. Now you see that warehouses uh, blew up, and um, this is a good illustration that this is not professional. You can think about a misuse or subverters group, but it shouldn't be like this. There shouldn't be any blowing up of these military um, warehouses. And this is not for the first time that it happened. So this is about professionalism. We should build an army based on the experience of best armies, Israeli army, U.S. army, Canada Indian army, and Norwegian army. And uh, we should carry out Ukrainian policy in all spheres. So we shouldn't look at Russia, because legislation we are speaking about uh, that is discriminatory, it is done based on Russian laws, and uh, they discriminate women by their law. And in the future, I believe that women I speak about and the topic I raised today for the second year in the Project Invisible Battalion, these women, they have the right to be in power, not some bad guys that went up in the social lifts uh, recently, but men and women who were in war, they have a wholly inherent right to rule this country because they respect the people and they love people and they confirmed their love and uh, trust uh, by their own blood. So this invisible battalion, this is about the fact that we should create uh, veteran movement for women and they should women should be involved in the key processes in the country and uh, we won't have these explosions in our uh, military warehouses and uh, now we believe that the story will change and uh, so all we do is the project of success of Ukraine please join us on facebook uh, invisible battalion page and you can contact us and you can cooperate with us and together we are the force. Thank you and glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes. And a brief specific uh, clarification, what channel, what time, so you, we will have press conference after the premiere and we will tell you about this, this later. Now we know the date, but we do not know the time. So believe me, it will be so loud you won't miss it. So we have time for one brief question. If you have questions, please. So maybe people just afraid to ask women like these questions. So thank you very much. 
If you want to get some comments, I believe speakers will be available after press conference. Thank you.